Welcome to the Fish Bowl right over my name. My name is Chief here, and I'm doing the show solo today. So we're just gonna do some like clips of you know the softball team playing and LSU baseball and Raging Cajun baseball as we are like basically coming to an end to all of the seasons here. This is the of the climax point, right? Like we hit the point on top of the mountain and we're you know getting the fallen resolution here. So anyway. So, talking about Louisiana Red Cajun softball, they had a huge win over LSU this past weekend, beating LSU in back-to-back games on Sunday to clinch a spot in the Sun Belt Regional. I'm not something the NCAA Super Regional against um, the Washington Huskies. I apologize for that. Their whole Sun Belt, man. That's interesting there. Anyway, so without further ado here, let's talk about this real quick. So, it was a big deal. It's always a big deal for the Cajuns to beat LSU. It always will be. It's because, you know, like, it's a, it's bragging rights. It's superiority over them in a softball. So that's always a big deal here. So what do I think is going to happen here between these um these teams here is the fact that I think pitching is going to come down to being one of the big deciders here. I think if you have a very good pitching staff here, and I think the Cajuns might have the advantage in that game because not the fact that one pit like one pitcher from they watched them might have a better pitcher than the Cajuns. It's like individually stacking up. They might have the advantage there. But I think here with the similar competition being played with Magnese and Washington like you know, maybe overlooking McNeese, they lost a game, but then they still struggled in game two. So that tells me that it's kink in the armor there. The Cajuns are going to look at that film and probably be very motivated here. They're, they're already motivated as it is anyway because they got snubbed from a regional host spot. And now they got to go on the road and take on a super regional here, which honestly, if McNeese could have pulled it off, we would have had a super regional in Lansom Park in Lafayette, which would have been an amazing experience for the Cajun fandom. And the Cajuns probably would be clinching a spot in the Women's College World Series. And you know how crazy that would have been? It would have been against Magnese of all teams here. They had never, you know, made it to that point, Magnese. I was so rooting for them to do that, but it just wasn't meant to be here. They they all, like, Campbell played extremely well. This, like, you need to find players like that are going to come up in clutch moments and be able to give you a, a hit a critical hit like a grand slam in that first inning for the Cajuns and a home run in that earlier game really cemented the Cajuns series win right there almost. I mean, they really hurt LSU in that beginning part. LSU had the rally back, but it just wasn't meant to be. The Cajuns looked like they were a team on a mission to destroy everything during that Sunday game. They had their backs against the wall and they pulled through. So, with, I think what's going to help them, though, a lot is the fact that they played a tough schedule early in the season as well. Yeah, I know Mac, I know Washington played a tough schedule here, but they didn't play no tough out of non-conference here. A non tough non-conference will show you how well you handle these other teams when it comes down to tournament time. Whenever you get down to the NCAA regionals and you play this tough non-conference schedule, whenever you beat up with these other teams, you've already been in this situation before. And you're able to be able to battle and get accustomed to it and do what you got to do here. So I think the Cajuns are really looking forward to this opportunity against this team here, uh, against Washington. I think they're going to win two or three games there. That's my pick. I'm going to stick with it here. So because last week I did pick the Cajuns to win two or three against LSU. Granted, I had one win on Saturday, but the Cajun winning Saturday and LSU coming out to lose a bracket to try to beat them there. But. I think it worked out well for the Cajuns in Baton Rouge. I mean, it would have been nice for them to win the Saturday and they maybe got some more rest on the Sunday, but they looked like they were ready to go. And that was something you can take to the bank there that I think they're going to be ready to go here. This is something different here. And the scary thing about this Cajun team is a lot of them are extremely young. A lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores getting playing time. Gary Glasgow is making sure they all get playing time because he's constantly changing lineups during these games so that's going to give them even more experience so in the coming years this Cajun softball group is looking pretty good and in looking into the future here trying to um, you know continue the success of this of the Louisiana Raging Cajun softball program 
All right, so we're gonna switch gears here. Here, I but like before I go talk about Rage of Cage baseball here real quick. I think um, I think the Cages win two or three and go to the women women's college world series in Oklahoma City. Now, take for a note, you're probably thinking, oh, this guy's a homer. You always go to the UL games or whatever. That's not the case at all. I'm gonna point it to your straight here. I don't think the Cajuns are going to win a national championship. I don't think they will. Now, granted, I'm going to cheer for them to win a national championship, but that's more than likely not going to happen. I'm not betting any money on them winning it. Now, if I did, I'd probably end up becoming a millionaire and, you know, be able to go home with a lot of money. But anyway, um, with with uh, Oklahoma being in the tournament, I just don't – it's just so hard for me to get the pick against the Sooners. I mean, time and time again, this – that Oklahoma program is something else, and they they're gonna be ready to play them for sure. So, um, I got Cajun going to the Women's College World Series with a two or three victory over Washington. Now switching gears here, let's talk about Rage of Cajun baseball. Now the Rage of Cajun baseball gonna take on Texas State tomorrow at 7:30 here. Oh, uh, it's gonna depend on a couple of things here. Now they swept Texas State. The Rage of Cajun baseball team did. Now, Texas State, they're going to be looking for revenge. And I think it's going to catch up with the Cajuns in the tournament. Now, which is the worst time for them that have happened to them is because it's just rough, you know, for all of them. That's just, it's going to be tough on them to win this kind of game, that kind of thing. So, with the... The, the season going the way it's been going. And just the, the pitching of the Rage Cage baseball team just needs to improve. I don't see them getting much higher up in that regard there. It's just going to be tough on them to be able to get all that done. And, you know, it, they got the bats. They had the bats down. That's not the problem. The problem is the pitching. And this would be a great time of year for them to turn it on and really get going. But... I think they're going to lose to Texas State in that first game of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament and go into the loser bracket where I think they'll they'll probably either be playing Georgia Southern or Georgia State given how that – and I think they would win either one of those matchups there easily and go into – back up to the winner's bracket where they would probably end up playing Coastal or somebody. I think Coastal or Texas State – it's – I think it depends on how that, all that goes. Texas State probably would end up playing – the number two or number one seed, depending on, I think it depends on like who the, the lower, the lower seed gets to play there. But I, I think the loser bracket team plays the number one seed or like whoever wins that game. And I think the Cajuns uh, lose the. I think Coastal's gonna be there at the end. I think it's gonna be them and Southern Miss probably. And I think uh, I think Coastal beats the Cajuns and knocks them out of the tournament. So I got the Cajuns going one and two. And the Sun Belt Conference tournament because I just don't, I don't trust the Cajuns pitching too much. I just think it's not where it needs to be when it comes down to the Sun Belt Conference tournament. And they'll miss the regionals because of it, because their RPI is so high right now. Their RPI is at 66 currently, and Texas State, who's at last at four, that's gonna be another reason they're one of the last four teams competing there. So it's gonna be one of those reasons where they're gonna try extra hard to get into the tournament here. Because they, they know they have to go a little bit of a run on the tournament here. I think Texas State's going to get it done there and see. Anyway, so now we switch gear to LSU baseball. Very similar to UL, UL baseball here because look at this here, guys. LSU baseball does not have that great pitching going on this year. Um, except for Paul Skeens, who probably is the best pitcher in the country. You can make arguments why he isn't, but, I mean, the stats here. He throws 100 and some miles an hour fastball. He's a very good pitcher, really limits you offensively what you can do, really, you know, gets you standing there swinging and striking out and just looking at balls getting right by you. So he was the SEC Pitcher of the Year. Paul uh, Dylan Cruz wins back-to-back Player of the Year awards for the SEC. So now granted, they're playing against South Carolina that first game. How the, the Tigers don't really need to go deep in this tournament here. They really don't need to go all the way through. They'll probably be a, a host team. Maybe they, they could play really conservatively and, like, you know, maybe beat South Carolina or even get knocked out, honestly. Um, but 
they're far enough ahead where they've got to do double elimination. So they, I mean, they could go lose two games and probably be all right, honestly, in terms of the whole regional hosting aspect of the whole entire thing there and be okay. Now, I just kind of wonder, like, if you're, they got to find a really, like, number three guy, though. I, they're okay at number two. They're number, they're okay at two, but three is really the question mark. Who's their number three? Like, Little, Little's been the guy that's been kind of getting blasted all over the place here. On social media, on the field, you name it. He's been getting, uh, not doing very good rate of return on him that much, but, um, you know, it's kind of one of those things here. I just want to do a little quick update here. Uh, we're going to do quick updates like this throughout the week here to kind of give you all my thoughts and what I think is going to happen here. So this is a little quick episode here. It's going to be about 10 to 15 minutes long, most of these episodes here. So I wouldn't value too much on the production value of this here. We're going to really shorten them up because we're trying to get this stuff changes and doing it once a week isn't really going to be favorable for anybody else here. Um, we'll just use video that we shot throughout the year because we're not going to go to Seattle and go film the Cajuns. I wish we would, but you know, that's just the way things work here. So we'll watch along like the rest of them here. So we'll see what happens here. There's a lot going on this week here. And uh, we're trying to watch the rest of these teams here and see how LSU baseball does and how our education baseball does too. Now, what, what seed is the LSU baseball going to be? Good question. They'll probably be a, I'm thinking a five. I think they'll probably stay around five, seven. Their RPI is four. South Carolina is five. Their RPI is not going to drop if they lose to South Carolina too much. Because they're all around the same ranking anyway. So, not too much. They've had success this year. So, I think LSU does beat South Carolina, though. I, I think they'll get them. They did play them two, game, two games earlier this year. One of them got canceled due to weather. They lost the first game against South Carolina on that Friday. Then that Saturday, LSU came back and ended up beating South Carolina in that game there. So, it's just going to be one of those things here. Is the pitching going to be on point for LSU? and Or is the can the bats get hot and be able to win? It's just going to be one of those things here. So, thank you all for tuning in. Hope you have a great and wonderful uh, I'm going to say week, but I'll probably update this in about two or three days. And, like, I'll probably do an update on probably Friday to see where everybody's at Thursday or Friday. So, we'll see how these little mini episodes do here. And I hope you have a great, wonderful week. Have a good night, Fishbowl Nation.